If you call your piece Trash Macbeth, you make it difficult for some mean-spirited reviewer not to <laughs> refer to it as Trashed Macbeth. Though in a way, that is what Lucy Cashin, director and guiding hand of this adaptation of Shakespeare's Scottish play, and her assistant director, Alyssa Still, have done. They have trashed Macbeth and pulled out of it the fragments they found apt to their purpose. What exactly that purpose was, I'm not sure I can say. I found some amusing and clever moments in it, though I don't think I discovered any new insights into Shakespeare's play, nor into its central characters, whose tragedy was more distanced than deepened. But I'm sure that the students at St. Louis University who worked on the production had to dig further into the original text than they had before. Certainly, they often spoke Shakespeare's lines when they were used with a clarity and conviction I don't find in every production, student or otherwise. Though when they went into the occasional stylized parody of the high romantic delivery of the lines, that clarity and conviction disappeared. I was told by the, their professor that the student designers, Wilson Webble for set, Laurel Kassenbrock for lights, Erica Withrow for costumes, Ben Lewis for sound, and Andy Southern for projection, that they developed their designs by working with the cast as they rehearsed, and it was an enlightening experience. Those designs were the trash, that is, they used trash, rags for the act curtain, props and costumes pieced together from whatever discarded materials came to hand, and lots of shredded paper. The cast had six actors. Anthony Kramer played Macbeth, Danny Gutis was Macduff, and Joseph Kircher was Banquo. They were all attired in quite handsome military dress uniforms. I suppose they were found in costume storage, hence trash. Alison Moser played Lady Macbeth and one of the witches. Parvuna Suleiman and Hallie Pattison were the other two witches. They also jointly played the porter in one of the funnier deliveries of his scene that I've seen. The women's dresses were styled like 1950s cocktail attire, with accessories, obviously from the trash bin. Cashin found the female characters doing stereotypical female things, cooking, cleaning, sewing, just like 1950s housewives, or I would think housewives of most periods. But the witches stir their bubbling cauldron as if they were on a 1950s TV cooking show. The 50s flavored the sound design, too. I thought Kay Starr's 1951 hit, The Wheel of Fortune, a particularly appropriate choice for Macbeth, and the lush sounds of a number called At Last provided a perfect accompaniment to Macbeth's At Last taking the throne. That's camp now, which undercuts taking seriously what's happening on stage or much else that Shakespeare was after. Maybe that was the point. Perhaps when the classics have become too familiar, they need to be trashed so that we can see them afresh. That didn't happen for me in this case, but I did find several amusing moments. Uh, I did too, and, and some moving ones too.